On this special episode, join Joel as he flies to Germany to pick up a helicopter to ferry it back to Saudi Arabia. He races against the weather and flies through the Alps, over the Mediterranean Sea, and across the Arabian Desert, back home to us in Saudi. This is the story of a family of four traveling the world as often as possible, sharing their adventures. Join us all on this season as we find exciting new places to explore, living this crazy life on the go. Please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button, and then also get notified when we release new videos. It really helps us out a lot. Doha. Just coming up on the uh, transfer desk. Got to go through the whole security thing and the passport and ID and all that funsy stuff. And then I'm going to show the wife my lounge. Hopefully I'll get some sushi, maybe some sashimis. You know, we'll have to see. They got their own duty free up on this one. I haven't been here since they were model. Get you a watch. This is the lounge, by the way. Sushi bar or prep station. There's the sushi display thing because they make it all fresh. The real lounge is like down there around the corner, both left to right. And then if you come over here, this is the private terminal. So they could take you right to your gate. Poor thing. <laughs> Yep, yep, looks terrible. Oh no, I should go down to McDonald's. <laughs> I like it, it's a flying cafeteria. It makes like, this is like almost the most American thing here in the world. It's barbecue and airplanes. I mean, Talk about cool. And it's in Germany. Um, we're gonna go to the Airbus factory, I think. I can't think of anything else to do right now. So hopefully this will all work. I'll put it on time lapse and we'll go from there. Unfortunately, the weather over the Alps wouldn't cooperate, so we got a few extra days to spend in Germany to take in the local sites. Finally, after our third day in Germany, the route through the Alps cleared and we were able to depart. We seized this opportunity post haste as there was a weather system building over Italy and we desperately needed to stay in front of it. Just got to the hotel, kind of should have thought in advance and made reservations. The town that we're at is booked solid, so the crew split up amongst three hotels. Hmm. Apartment complexes. People thinking I'm weird for filming them. And probably a grocery store. I wonder if they have beef jerky. I might go look for beef jerky. Yeah, I think that could happen. But they've got a restaurante. In case you don't know, I think that's Italian for uh, pork chop. Yeah. 
another interesting fact. You know, you, you think of the keys to your car right now and they're cool and they're sleek. Well, if you ever wanted to see the keys to a, I don't know, maybe $10 million helicopter, sit. It's all. On the second day, we departed Ancona for Athens. And as you can see along the way, we make a number of fuel stops. The range in this helicopter is only about 280 to 300 nautical miles, so it does anything but pass a gas station. So we're in Athens, arrived here, I don't know, six something, about a half an hour taxi ride. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I've stayed in a lot of hotels. I mean, all around the planet. It's uh, leaves something to be desired. I believe it's the last time I'll let somebody else pick a hotel room for me. Today would be a short day with an overnight stay in Cyprus. If we continued on from Cyprus at this point, there just wouldn't be adequate accommodations for the helicopters and the crews to spend the night. So we just decided to err on the side of caution and spend the night in Cyprus. So we landed in Cyprus, yes, Cyprus. And my wife booked me the most amazing hotel. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's massive, you know, food's all inclusive, local drinks are all inclusive. Going on a walk, do you see some ruins that are around the corner? Wife wants me to go like, ugh, that way. I don't want to do it. Um, yeah. Mighty Wendy, we'll give this a shot. So my wife asked me to go check out some ruins. And you can see some ruins, some people stacked up some rocks and shit by the coast. And she could probably nerd it up and she'll tell you that, you know, some Mesopotamians or Turkish or Greeks built this thing to worship the god of Zeus or Hera or Achilles or something like that. But I know who it really was. This was the temple for the worshipers of Gozer to bring about the one true end, Sul. Look it up, 100% true. Are you a god? 100% true. Joel was right on a few things. I am gonna nerd this up, and he is standing on some ancient ruins. This site was recently found during the building for a hotel. However, that project is now on hold. It is believed that this was a worship complex. Its floor plan was made up of a temple, columns, a yard, living quarters, a cistern, and gardens. Since this is a new discovery, there is little information regarding the site, but they believe it is from the Ptolemaic Kingdom during the Hellenistic period. All right, so you've got the rock stacker, you know, pretty good, not gonna lie. Pretty, pretty good. Stack some rocks. And then some dude came by and said, hey, hold my beer. Check that out. Yeah, this dude knew what's up. He's like, that, <laughs> that, this is the future. This is Mason. This is Stony. And on the edge of the ruins, we built hotels 
A lot of adult owned hotels. My co pilot, because he's young, he better uh, watch out. Nana's gonna try to abduct him. If he wakes up in a bathtub full of ice, missing a kidney, that's no excuse to miss departure tomorrow at 7 a.m. That's that's where my wife wants me to go. I don't want to go. I think I might go get more pizza and a beer. I did learn something today. It was how to say thank you in uh, Cyprian, Cyprus, Cyprian. I don't know. Evaristo. Saint Nicholas Church. The land is donated by the Wow. I should. Just murder that. Let's just not go there. You know, it's like Dracula. Just don't cross the threshold ever. Just learned something that elevated the situation of this place. Apparently, it's topless. Who are you doing? Glad I didn't see Nana though. On this morning, we woke up extremely early with the intent of making it all the way into Saudi Arabia, but Egypt had other plans. Our first stop in Egypt, we were delayed by a number of hours for customs. After that, Cairo approach vectored us halfway back to Cyprus and then to Cairo, where we spent another couple of hours. Finally, after we were cleared to departure, we made it to Shama Sheikh. We had intended going to Neum, but we weren't able to get fuel and the sun went down, so we decided it was just better to stay for another day. After our night in Shama Sheikh, with a nice early departure, sun not even up yet, we were able to arrive in Saudi Arabia. We made a number of stops in Saudi, and let me tell you something, the west coast of Saudi Arabia is breathtaking. It's former seabed, it's jagged mountains, and it is quite stunning to look at. There's architecture all over the place that people have long since forgotten about. As you enter the central region of Saudi Arabia, you get to what you expect. It's a lot of desert and a lot of rolling sand dunes, but it's still quite interesting. And our last stop after a number of fuel stops, again, this thing does not pass an airport to get fuel, was back home at Rastanura, and I was finally able to make it home to my family. Can't thank the co-captain and crew enough for this flight. It was seamless and well-planned. Good job, guys. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button before heading over to Patreon, where you can support our efforts even further. You get exclusive content, ad-free videos, and so much more just for showing your love. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.